Hi everybody and welcome back to Secrets. I'm Kevin Harnett and this is a special edition that takes us to a culinary event for the ages. It's a dinner called the New Cuban Food Revolution. Fernando Martinez hosted it and he was joined by Chef Douglas Rodriguez of Miami who's known across the country for his modern style Latin cooking. Our cameras were there to capture the concept and the cooking. I was born in, in Havana. I lived there until I was uh, almost 20 years old. Back then, the government was not giving the licenses to uh, open restaurants, so I had the dream of having my own restaurant. That's why I decided to uh, come to the States. I'm Chef Douglas Rodriguez. Both of my parents are immigrants from Cuba, but I was uh, lucky enough to be born here in the United States. I have a restaurant in Miami, Florida called De Rodriguez Cuba. I also own and have a restaurant in Philadelphia called Alma de Cuba. I always wonder, you know, what would happen if, you know, Cuba was open like any other country do, you know, and cooks say like they had access to spices and different types of, you know, proteins and food in Cuba hasn't really evolved as much as it has in the rest of the world. Asian cuisine, Chinese, French, uh, Spanish cuisine, they all uh, have evolved. I 100% think that if Cuba uh, would have been uh, an open uh, country like the United States, that culinarily, it would have been a lot further advanced. Last time I was in Miami, I told him, hey, chef, let's do something together and try to reimagine, you know, Cuban cuisine. It could be something like this. We're calling it the new Cuban food revolution. To me, it's extremely, you know, extremely special. One, because I'm cooking uh, not only with my friend, but also with my mentor. Probably the best, you know, Latin chef in the United States. He was the first one that used uh, Cuban and Latin American ingredients in fine dining cooking. He started the whole Nuevo Latino movement. Well, me and Fernando collaborated on producing a menu doing some classic Cuban dishes with kind of like a very uh, innovative twist. Most of the dishes that uh, we're doing tonight is a, you know, a, a take on classic dishes. With a little bit of a twist to it. The same flavors that you find in the classic dish, but you know, in a more presented in a modern way. Cuban flair to it, if you will. We took like the Cuban sandwich and we put a twist on it. Chef Douglas is doing a Cuban sandwich on a stick. We're doing a, you know, similar take on, on, the, on the timba sandwich. I used to eat it as a kid. I would come from school and my mom would make, uh, you know, a, a guava a paste and, and, and cream cheese or white cheese sandwich. We're doing foie gras instead. Each one of the courses is actually paired with a masterly prepared cocktail. Six different cocktails being prepared tonight. Then we're going into a lobster and shrimp ceviche that uh, Chef Douglas is doing. Ceviche is a dish that takes uh, fish or seafood and marinates it with lime juice and citrus juice and cooks the fish or the seafood with the citrus juices. And I've taken some young coconut meat and taking it out of the shell and cut it up. Young coconut meat is very tender, very soft, almost like gelatinous white coconut meat. So it's really tender and sweet, really, really good. And then I mixed it with coconut water, lime juice, cilantro, Thai basil, tomatoes, uh, lightly poached lobster meat, shrimp, and then I garnished it with two uh, plantain chips, which is something very classic that Cubans would eat with ceviche. Then we're going into a take on uh, and, and a paella. Like a Cuban style paella with uh, prawns and uh, clams. Almost like a deconstructed paella. It's called a sopado paella. I think it's an absolute brilliant dish what Fernando has done. Making a lobster, a motion. We're using a, a palacio chorizo, uh, iberico lardo. It's like, a, almost like a, a bacon but without the meat it's just fat so it's really rich so we're covering the scallops with that it's a very innovative uh, preparation that he's done our third course today is 
the Palomia style ribeye steak with bone marrow and oxtail croquettes. Palomia is a very classic uh, Cuban steak where they take an eye round, which is a very inexpensive cut of meat, and they slice it very thin because it's so tough, the only way to be able to chew it is to slice it thin. And then they marinate it with sour orange juice and onions, and then they sear it in a hot pan and they caramelize the onions and all the citrus juices get collected by the onions. What we've done is we've taken a very expensive cut of meat with a lot of fat in it. We've taken a creek stone ribeye, and instead of marinating it with sour orange juice, we took the zest of the orange and zested the orange the outside of the steak, and then we sliced it very thinly and seared the steak, and then we're serving it with roasted bone marrow and an oxtail croquette. The oxtail croquette is very classic Cuban. And then he's doing an onion and brown butter chimichurri. The richness of the bone marrow, the oxtail, and the ribeye together combine very well. A play on a traditional Cuban palomilla steak with a very high-end twist. Our fourth course tonight is the uh, uh, duck trio. We're doing uh, duck three ways. We're doing uh, sear breast. A duck breast, it has a beautiful guava gastrique on the plate. Duck confit party, and then we're doing uh, duck uh, prosciutto. We're doing uh, kind of like bacon, uh, duck bacon, really crispy. Uh, we have fried quail eggs. We're freezing the foie gras or shun, and we shave it like that raspado on top of the uh, duck. And we're doing a, a, a take on the classic, uh, what they call moros con gris. Which is a, a very peasant Cuban dish, which is white rice and black beans cooked together. And, but he's taking it to another level. He's taking wild rice and lentils. So you have the same flavors, but you know, in a, in a presented also in a modern way. It's French, brilliantly put together with a Cuban twist. Deliciously done. The fifth course is puerco done two ways. Puerco is actually the Spanish word for pork. First you braise the uh, pork and then you fry it so it's crispy in the outside and tender in the inside. And then we took a piece of pork shank with the skin on and we confit it and made the skin on it very crispy, like a crackling on the outside. And then they'll have the two textures of pork laying on a white corn polenta flavored with manchego cheese. Fernando made a mojo powder. Mojo means to wet. And classically, the sauce is made with cooked onions and garlic, citrus juices, olive oil, and herbs. And Fernando has created a dry mojo. Tastes just like a mojo, but in a powdered form. Brilliant. It's just one of the best dishes. I can taste it right now. Our final course for tonight is a very beautiful uh, chocolate dessert. It's the shape of a cigar. We serve the cigar inside a uh, Cuban cigar box. It's a pistachio cake rolled in chocolate mousse then dipped into chocolate ganache. It looks like a cigar with a cigar band on it. And then we're serving that with uh, Cuban coffee ice cream. With an edible matchbook that's made out of pastillage candy and an edible cookie matchbook box. We have something that is called a smoking gun. And we put this, the smoke gun inside the uh, cigar box and we close it. When you open the box, the cloud of smoke escapes. Visually gorgeous. To me that's one of the most uh, creative desserts that I ever seen so. Originality of the dessert with the Cuban cigar was really tasty. Yeah, it was quite a creative presentation. I very much enjoyed it. Asombroso. It's just absolutely awesome. Increíble. Incredible. You really can't get anything better than that. <laughs> buen provecho. Bon appetit translates buen provecho. The new Cuban food revolution. <laughs>